What's up, everybody? Good to see you back again. And uh, just scrolling through the chat, sorry, it's not Heath, it's uh, AppSec Tuesday. So every Tuesday, you get uh, you get yours truly. And uh, Heath uh, drops in, I think usually on like Fridays, or, or he does a, a Sunday stream. So um, so yeah, hopefully you can see me, uh, see me, hear me okay. Um, I've done something very risky. <laughs> the kittens are in the room. So if you see tails crossing the screen, or if you see suddenly my camera fall over, you know why. So, um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's it. And, uh, oh, this is a good question. Have I hacked anything today yet? Uh, I have actually, I've been doing a little bit of bug bounty today and also some other stuff, uh, for work and finished, Finished up editing a YouTube video for for next week, so um, so yeah, it's been it's been quite a productive day, which is good. And uh, as you can see, my my mic is already shaking because I don't know what the cat's doing. She's been crazy. Calm down. As soon as I go on stream, they uh, they they liven up, and uh, I I don't know. I might have to kick them out. We'll see. We'll see. 
So, um, no music today, unfortunately. So <laughs> I've been trying to set up my laptop, uh, which I've used for the last few weeks um, for music. But unfortunately, uh, today it just wasn't playing ball. So there's no, um, uh, it's like the sound output thing that goes into Restream uh, just wasn't working. So, so unfortunately, just my just my voice. But feel free to put some music on in the background. And uh, here you go. You can say hi to uh, hi to Poppy, who's who's chilling and making my life difficult. All right. Let's uh, let's see. We'll do the same as usual. So we'll do a little bit of um, ask me anything, and then uh, I've got a couple of web apps uh, lined up. So one try hack me box. And one uh, CTF that I've been working on, so eventually it will be um, it will be live, and you'll be able to go and, and and solve it yourself. But I'm just running it locally today because the private boxes on TryHackMe are a little bit too slow for um, for live streams. So so all good. All right, <laughs> hold the kitty. Uh, if she comes along, if one of them does. They're on the windowsill. Maybe, maybe in a bit. We'll see. Because um, you know what cats are like. They have a mind of their own. So, But I'm sure they'll make an appearance uh, soon. All right. Oh, hello from Azerbaijan. Not a place I've been. I'd like to visit one day. That would be awesome. But hello from the UK. And are you taking on pen, pen testing projects with TCM? Oh, interesting question. So me at the moment, not currently. Um, I'm working like I'm pretty up to my eyeballs in um, producing like updating courses and creating content and um, building labs for for some stuff that's in the pipeline. So there's some really exciting stuff coming for web apps later on this year. I can't give you too many details. If you ask Heath on his stream, he'll be able to give you more details. I don't want to accidentally leak things because um, I'm a bit of a gossip. So um, so that's all I'm going to say. I've been working on some cool AppSec stuff, of course. Um, but I'm not I'm not doing any of the pen tests at the moment. Um, all right, let's see. What other questions have we got? Uh, I'm a couple of minutes behind on the chat, so um, I hopefully will get to all of your questions soon. Um, Interesting question. How can people earn money through cybersecurity without a job and studying for sets? Do you want to know the really controversial answer to this? It's really easy. Become a content creator. <laughs> and uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name any names, but there are obviously plenty of cybersecurity content creators with zero experience and zero certifications. So there you go. There is there is that. Not to bash on people. Um, you know, content creation is 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 also all about entertainment as well as um, you know knowledge and things like that. But you have to obviously use your brain, just like when you open a newspaper. You know, journalists don't always tell the truth. Hey, Instinct Syndicates, how's it going? Glad you liked the. Um, most recent video. We might use a little bit of Kaido again today. Um, the font size is a little bit too small for for stream. I think, as I mentioned in the video or, or, or last week, but um, but yeah, we'll definitely be seeing more of that and Postman as well. We'll we'll uh, we'll get around to doing Postman. I've almost finished creating the collection for um, uh, for the items thing, which will be up on the course page soon. So that should be fun. Oh, this is a good question. Thanks for the question, Rehan. Um, how much Linux knowledge should I possess to start hacking? Um, to start, zero. You don't necessarily need to know anything to begin. If and you know, you can do these things. And you can be like, hey, you need this, and you need this, and you need this, and you need this. Obviously, you should study those things. You should learn Linux, but it's not like you don't have to learn it before you start. If that makes sense, you don't need to study to start studying, or you like. If that makes sense, so you know, try and download Kali or something and um, start getting used to it. But you, you know, learn it organically is, is is absolutely fine, and then you know, learn learn over time. But you don't have to be an expert to uh, to start out. All right, what else have we got? If I keep scrolling down, <laughs> I can. I've got a ton of high poppy messages. Poppy, the ginger one's called Elfie, by the way. So uh, distracted by the cat, yes. This is like story of my life. <laughs> They're very needy cats. Uh, good question. What can I say? <laughs> 
There's definitely stuff in the pipeline. Um, I can't give you specifics. Ask ask Keith, ask the boss. But um, but yeah, we have stuff in the pipeline for sure. So um, there will be some stuff coming. Uh, this is also a good question. What do I think is burp, better, Burp or, or Zap? Personally, I'm a Burp Suite fan. Um, Zap is kind of a useful tool, but I don't really use it, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, I think Burp Suite is better. I think it's more like a kind of professional grade tool, if that makes sense, especially the scanner. It's not to not to bash on 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 Zap at all. Um, it is a good tool, but um, I just think that Burp Suite is more um, is a more well established and and you know uh, is better for my workflow. So, all right. Oh, here's a good question. So. Uh, try hacking a question. What does it mean to knock a box over? How can you avoid this? I presume you mean like denial of service. So like if you scan something and something crashes and it, and it it dies, basically, I think um, I presume that's what you mean. So it depends what you're targeting. If you're like when you're on a production system, especially on internal networks, I would probably you know make sure that you're not running really intensive scans, try and rate limit your scans, make sure you don't crash stuff. Uh, and same for like vulnerability scanning. If you're testing lots and lots of um, uh, usernames and like credentials against like internal DBs and stuff, you're probably going to lock out some accounts. So you could cause denial of service. So I think that's what it means. So you just got to be a little bit careful. Some of this comes from practice. You know, sometimes you just feel like a target can take a little bit more, and sometimes you look at something you're like, "This is dead janky." So, <laughs> so I'm going to be a little bit more careful. So, um, so yeah. Oh, this is interesting. Do you recommend to report RCV or try and find another vulnerability if the scope was open? I, if you find remote code execution, definitely report it. Like, yeah, I, I definitely would. Um, that doesn't mean you can't continue to to search um, or kind of continue your research on on the target to try and upgrade to you know let's say you've only got limited code execution, maybe you get like full remote code execution where you can pop a shell, then you know you can obviously upgrade it. But um, but yeah, I definitely don't. Uh, RCE is generally a critical issue, so don't don't sit on it. You should report it as soon as possible. As soon as you find that it is, you, you verify it and it is impactful. So. Um, bro, I want to earn money from the dark web. Uh, it's not really a place I spend much time, to be honest. So, um, probably can earn money from there, but it's not, uh, not really my forte. All right. Got loads of questions today. This is great. Um, so I'm really far behind. I'm down at like, I'm five minutes behind. So apologies for that. How did I start my career in the hacking field? I was a developer and uh, kind of was just interested in cybersecurity. And so I moved from uh, being a developer into a security role and then kind of continued from there. So it's quite a typical, like, you know, I, I started off in like a, just a junior security analyst role and then worked in a bunch of different companies and, and built my experience that way. So, um, so quite organic, I suppose. Um, do, 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 do. Hello from Kenya. Hello. Hello from the UK. And I'm not up to date with the news. Um, you hear about our little problem with Putin, yeah. Um, obviously, I know about what's happening, but I didn't know like super specifics. I did meet the Ukrainian National SOC, um, where I saw a really good presentation from them at a conference last year in Dublin. Uh, it was first conference, which is like the instant response conference, and they had some really interesting insights into um, what uh, what was happening, kind of like thirty days before and leading up to the invasion, and um, also kind of what current you know cyber warfare actually looks like, which was a really really interesting talk. So if you can find it somewhere online, I definitely recommend um, uh, the Ukrainian National uh, Set or, or like SOC. Um, they did a really great presentation on like you know what what cyber warfare looks like and how to protect their uh, critical infrastructure and things like that. That was a really really interesting uh, interesting day. So, um, how can I hack with Kali Linux? You can do the um, 
do Heath's 15 hours of ethical hacking course on um, on YouTube. That'll get you up and running. You should be should be good to go. All right, um, let me keep going down. Can I get a job with the EJPT? I suspect so. Uh, I presume you can get like an entry level role. I think it depends on a lot of things. Uh, I think certs basically should hopefully get you an interview. And then at the interview, that's where you really get a job, if that makes sense. So you've got to make sure that your, you know, your interview skills are up to scratch and you know, you know about the OWASP top 10, you know about Active Directory, um, you know about common attacks, you know about your methodology and, and things like that. So that's really, really important, I would say. Um, but having a cert is kind of like a step through the door and then you know, uh, interview skills are the, are the next one. This is a really great question. And actually, I was in a meeting today where we discussed this quite a lot. <laughs> so how can I get started uh, on real targets? Uh, you've done a lot of sandboxes. So I'm, I presume you mean like CTF and things like this. Um, just start. That's basically what you need to do is you just need to, you know, you'll have a workflow. You know you have reconnaissance. You know how to do, um, you know how to map an application. You know how to find functionality. You know how to test it. If you've done a lot of CTF, you know how to do all of that. So you just need to systematically work through a target and be like, hey, this is my target. I'm going to spend a few hours. I'm going to try and understand the target, make sure I enumerate it properly so I understand what it does and how it works, and then test test all of the input fields, test the, test the JSON web tokens, um, test for rate limiting. If that's all the rate, uh, like brute force attacks are usually out of scope for bug bounty for some reason. Um, you know, so honestly, there's nothing to stop you from from starting. You just gotta just gotta do it and try and be methodical. I think pick three or four vulnerabilities that you know really well, and test for those, and then slowly expand and you know really understand an application and how it works is is a good trick. Hey, what's up, Sri Lanka? I've actually been to Sri Lanka before. Really, really amazing country, um, and the food was incredible. So um, hopefully, I can visit again one day. Um, highly recommend if you get the chance to go to Sri Lanka. So really nice to see you joining in. One of my um, top places that I would recommend visiting. All right, so let's keep going. Um, will I be at DEF CON? Um, no, you know what? I've never been to DEF CON. <laughs> so I definitely won't be DEF CON in the US, uh, unfortunately. I might be at some conferences elsewhere in the world, but um, maybe next year. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I have a busy schedule this year, unfortunately. So it is um, it is hard to get out to conferences. And yeah. All right. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, this is a great question. OK. So what does it require to build a profile for cybersecurity? You haven't got any experience. The so job requires needs about three to five years. What's your recommendation? So, hmm. I would say if you if you're just starting out, obviously you want to kind of go into entry level roles. But if you some people are in the position where you might already be in a well paid job, or you might already be like you know somewhere in your career, and you're you're not able to take that step down. Um, so what I definitely recommend is if you don't have the experience, you have to make up for it in some other way. So that might be community contributions. It might be getting a high rank on Hack the Box. It might be getting certifications. So you just got to think like, OK, I don't have three to five years of experience, but you do have all of these things and then apply anyway, if that makes sense. So that would be my advice. If you, if you have a gap, try and fill it with something else so that the hiring manager um, uh, sees that you know gives you that opportunity. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see what else have we got. So I'm at seventeen oh six. Oh gosh, I'm already like ten minutes behind. Sorry guys, <laughs> I'm really um... yeah. If you guys are on LinkedIn, uh, obviously feel free to connect with each other. That's why we're here as well. You're not here just for for my accent. Um, obviously, feel free to connect with each other and, and um, you know, be part of the community. And obviously, we have the TCM Discord as well. So feel free to drop into there anytime. And uh, yeah, if you if you want to hang out on the web app chat, that's the uh, the best place to be, in my opinion. Um, let's keep going down. Thank you. 
Let's have a look at this one. Can I read this? This this is Katakana. So is this Naruko or Saruku at all? I can't remember. My my Katakana reading was never that good. Uh, as someone who's competitive program and is learning offensive defensive security, what kind of job would I recommend? Um, if you're interested in both sides, then I would look at analyst roles uh, or engineering roles, um, because basically, if you have good development skills, you're going to be able to do things like um, deploy and tune tools and make sure the rule sets are up to date and things like that, if you enjoy that kind of work. Um, but obviously, if you're interested in the offensive side, then you know go down the pen testing, the pen testing road. So it's really up to you. But um, the analyst role, generally, or like uh, you know, you can like have like blue team, purple team. I think blue team is obviously they always have a mixture of things to look at. Um, it really depends on the job. Like every job description, regardless of the title, you'll see something that's like red team lead, and it'll be like. A vulnerability assessment job, or you'll see something like you know um, uh, level two SOC, and it will be like firewall deployment and maintenance. So really, you have to kind of like read into the details. But yeah, I would definitely say like try and find an analyst role or or a role that has you know both sides if that's what's uh, that's what interests you. Um, Regarding becoming an influencer, Fabian from Love If dropped a video on how he actually wants to focus on building his. Oh, yeah, this is um, what's it called? Hextree.io or something? Yeah, I saw the same video. Um, so it looks really good. So I am a longtime viewer of Live Overflow, uh, Live Overflow. And he's like one of my role models. So um, yeah, I really love his content. And uh, hopefully I can meet him one day because he's only, he's German, right? I think. So he's not too far from the UK. Maybe we'll meet at a conference one day. But um, if you guys haven't seen Live Overflow, props to them. Probably, yeah, definitely in my top three um, YouTube uh, channels. I'm going to have to speed up a little bit because I'm so far behind on the question. Sorry about that. So Vim or GUI-based editors? Uh, I use Vim a lot, to be honest. Um, but I would say if you're doing a lot of editing, um, definitely sometimes I switch into like Mousepad or, or some GUI. I don't think it matters too much, to be honest. Just use what, what's good for you. And then you're all good. All right. Um, do, 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 do. I'm going to keep. Um, hey, what's up, Kaido? Welcome to the welcome to the stream. I hope you liked the, the video that went uh, that went live yesterday. We were on Kaido last week, which was nice. Solved. I can't remember what box it was. We did solve a challenge. Um, we're doing some, uh... yeah, I can't remember what we did last week. I can't remember what we did yesterday, so uh, so all good. This is a really good question. Uh, how much overlap do PMPT and OSCP share? Um, I don't know. <laughs> so let me give you some context. So I hold the OSCP certification, and I have gone through the course materials for PMPT, but I haven't taken the PMPT exam. Uh, yet I will I will take it at some point. Um, I'd say there's there's some overlap for sure because obviously you're teaching like a pen test methodology, um, and you're teaching like enumeration, Active Directory. I think the PMPT is very much more focused on like Active Directory and you know here's how you conduct a network penetration test. And I think OSCP is a little bit more focused on like problem solving and building those those troubleshooting skills. So I would say they they definitely overlap a lot, but they are quite different in terms of one is teaching you like, uh, no, I don't want to say anything controversial, but you know that like I've said, they are, they are a little bit different. All right, so let me keep going down and for a few more minutes of of questions, and then we'll we'll jump into um, hacking some web apps because I've got a CTF that I built that I want to try out on on you guys, and if if you all like it, then I'll post it on on uh, Try Hack Me at some point in, over the next few weeks. Um, oh, this is a cool question. OK, if you are new to cybersecurity, which four courses? There's only there's only one course you need, and that's called uh, Practical API Hacking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, 
I'm only saying that because that's the, the course that I put on there. Uh, I would say, obviously, the PEH is probably your number one priority if you're new. Uh, it's going to give you a really good overview. Um, the practical web security testing is uh, is pretty good. The OSINT one is really, really good. Um, if you have some idea of, like, if you want to be, like, in malware analysis, then obviously, you know, go the malware analysis course route. But obviously, if you're if you're not sure, then leave that to later. Uh, what would I choose as my last one? Hmm. I would probably choose the Android one, but I'm quite interested in like web and mobile hacking. So that's kind of like, I'm a bit biased. But yeah, I go with like PEH and, and the OSINT one, the web security testing, and then, I don't know, dealer's choice for the last one. If um, if if you all have a recommendation, then uh, feel free to obviously you know drop it drop it into the into the chat. Um, I haven't seen the new attack method ghost touch yet. Um, I'm sure it will pop up on my feed at some point. Um, we haven't started yet, so we'll do like a few more minutes of questions, and then we'll we'll get into the boxes. So so all good. Uh, log for J. I'll do a log for J stream at some point. Um, my kind of like in depth knowledge of like Java is is not great. Java is probably my weakest language, so I can't go super deep on it. But it would be an interesting one to like do uh, some ana uh, some analysis on and and. Um, yeah, that would be cool. I'll definitely keep that for a, for a future video. Yeah, good question. Track me versus hack the box for somebody who's borderline. I'm actually, yeah, there's going to be a video on this next week. Uh, I would say if you're intermediate, then I would lean more towards hack the box, I think. Unless there's a particular pathway that you want to take with try hack me. Um, and so usually I'd start with try hack me. Do some hack the box and then proving grounds, and then I would go back to try hack me if you want to do something like the the red team um, or uh, some of the other networks, if that makes sense. So it's kind of like start there, do some other stuff, and then and then head back there. I think is the best the best way to go. Proving grounds really really good though. Uh, I definitely I would say proving grounds practice um, play is obviously the vulnerable boxes, but practice I think of all of the platforms has the probably the most consistent good boxes. Because you know, a lot of the time I'm on Hack the Box, I'm like, oh, this box is weird. And yeah, I, there's a lot of good boxes on Hack the Box, but, um, but uh, yeah. Hey, what's up? I feel like I could get away with some some you know identity theft at some point. So uh, I'm not Heath, by the way. <laughs> I'm Alex. Heath. Uh, Heath is uh, streaming maybe Friday, I think, or, or Sunday. He'll be um, he'll be doing some cool stuff at some point. But he's a busy guy, so uh, so yeah, I always look forward to his streams. All right. Oh, that was a great question just there. It just flicked by. What's my WPM? Uh, like maybe ninety, something like this. Ninety, ninety-five. 100, 100, 105 on a good day. Uh, it depends how much punctuation there is. I'm not very good at punctuation. So um, one day, right, we'll do, I need to warm up, but we'll do a type racer competition at some point. Maybe we can get like all of the TCM team members on here, get Evan on here finally, and uh, we'll get Adriana on and Zach, and we'll all do type racer. I reckon Adriana will just destroy us all, but um, but we'll see. Maybe her cats will distract her. So, okay, this is a cool. Um, uh, can you explain how Bug Bounty actually works? Basically, uh, your company signs up for Bug Bounty program, and you decide what's in scope and what's out of scope. And then people who sign up to the platform, um, obviously, you know, agree to the terms and conditions. So your scope might be, hey star.mywebsite.com, which is like all subdomains under my main domain. And then you might say, hey, denial service is out of scope, and you're only allowed to like send maximum five requests per second. These are kind of like normal T's and C's, although I really think the, the rate limiting and throttling is, is kind of dumb. But um, 
Uh, yeah, and then obviously if you have a finding, you submit it, uh, you disclose it through the platform. You don't disclose it publicly. Uh, you do like a responsible disclosure, they triage it, and then if they uh, if they uh, deem it as like, you know, a critical issue or, or whatever level issue, you then might get a payout or you'll get like a um, uh, uh, added to like a, a leaderboard or, or like some recognition basically. So in a nutshell, that's, that's kind of how it works. Um, it's an interesting concept, uh, but you know. Um, <laughs> I love Heath Adams. Me too. Heath's, Heath's, a, Heath's a legend. He's done a lot for our industry. And uh, I've learned tons from him. So uh, so it's it's all good. We're very lucky to have him in the world. Um, this is an interesting question. I'm not sure because I didn't I haven't really done the EEJPT, but I wouldn't advertise the like TCM is gonna set you up to pass another exam. The practical ethical hacking is so that you can pass the PMPT uh, and that's it. So it might help, but I'm not going to tell you that if you've done the PH course, you're going to pass the EJPT, if that makes sense. So so um, you might have to do a little bit of extra study or, or whatever. So it'd definitely be a good supplement, but um, it probably isn't going to be like a, you know, it's not going to be a one-to-one. -one. All right, a couple more minutes. Uh, let me scroll down. How to get a pen test internship? This is a really good question, actually. So my my previous company, we used to run boot camps, and then people who'd go to the boot camps would then could then like apply for an apprenticeship. So that's how my previous company did. Heath, I think, does it or, or TCM do it in terms of like they look for people who are like contributing to the community and and really active and doing good things and being a great person, and then they might be like, hey, do you want to do an internship with us? But I think it's different, like company to company. It's it's really hard to say because it's really it's going to be really different. But networking is really important, um, and try and you know try and be visible in the community, do good things, and then you know something should come up, and it should be all good. Um, all right. Uh, which vulnerability should should we check first? Uh, means any roadmap? So honestly, I generally prioritize um, like enumeration and understanding the application over specific vulnerabilities. Um, so what I tend to do is I tend to map the application. Excuse me, I'm going to cough. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, understand what the developers intended, and then look at what are all the entry points, what's all the functionality. And then I generally start with um, authentication, authorization, risky functionality like file uploads, um, password resets, uh, login forms, and, and things like this. That's kind of like the main, um, the main thing. So... I tend to, that's kind of like my methodology is like, I'll do a lot of enumeration and then I'll try and focus on functionality that, you know, if broken could be critical to the application. And then I kind of go from there, I suppose, depending on, on the situation. So hopefully that gives you like some, some direction. <laughs> this is a funny question. What's my salary? Uh, I kind of, I suppose you could technically figure out, if you go and look at Heath's uh, job postings, you might be able to find um, what he offers. He, I TCM pay really well, which is really, really nice. Um, I think we we get a really good salary, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, what can I say? I could share it, but I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if it's appropriate to, but um, you know, I share it with my friends and stuff, like they all know how much money I'm I'm earning. Um, all right, so let me do two more questions and then we'll jump into, uh, uh, jump into, uh, breaking some stuff. This is a really interesting question. Um, I kind of find it hard to answer this because, uh, I'm not a full-time like bug bounty hunter. Like a little bit, I like, I'm like a dabbler. And my background is more like application security engineering. So 
like part of a team that you know is working on either an internal application, working more closely with developers, doing code review, and, and things like that. And obviously in bug bounty, you very rarely get um, source code and things like that. So um, I think if you're if you're confident in your web application hacking skills or your security skills, um, I you know people do do it full time, but there's there's other options as well. You don't just have to consider bug bounty if that makes sense. So, you know, um, application security uh, is kind of like an ever growing field, and it's increased massively over the last few years. So, um, so yeah, there's definitely yeah, uh, there's definitely some stuff uh, to be looking at. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Of course, you know, a lot of people do do it. But um, would I choose to go? Full-time bug bounty? Probably not. I don't think I personally have the discipline for it. Um, hey, this is a great question. Am I into online chess? Yes, I do play chess, uh, and I do play online chess. But I am horrible at at, at, um, at like bullets and uh, blitz chess. I'm much better at kind of like rapid and, and longer games. So um, yeah, if you ping me on LinkedIn, we can play sometime. All right, uh, one more question, and then we'll do some stuff. And then apologies if I didn't get to all of your questions. I'm still like 15 minutes behind on the chat. Um, let me find an interesting, an interesting question, one that we haven't had before, because lots of them are like ones that we've we've already had. Um, Wait, why, why are you laughing at me, Adrian? <laughs> this is probably like 10 minutes ago. What, what happened? Um, I'm scrolling down really fast to find like the final question. Oh, this is, okay, this is, yeah. What's your most valuable skill in cybersecurity? Um, I would say probably the ability to troubleshoot and triage uh, is the uh, is probably like your most valuable skill because a lot of times, like even though I've done a lot of web app pen testing, um, a lot of the time I'll like. I'll find an input or I'll find a framework or it'll be a language, it'll be Java or something, a Java application. And I still have to be able to get up to speed very quickly on that. So your ability to kind of like understand what the application is doing, read error messages and, you know, quickly dive into um, Stack Overflow or some other random posts to find, try and understand what's happening. That's probably your most valuable skill. Um, yeah, I think. I think if you can do that, then you're, you're in... Uh, good stead, if that makes sense. So, so all good. All right. So, if you had a great question and I missed it, I apologize. Um, we will like I'll answer some more questions as we go, but I can't just sit and or stand and answer questions for like you know two hours. If if uh, if that makes sense. So, um, let me find out where I am. Do, 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 do. So I've got like a thousand windows open. I should have cleaned up my um, my PC before before live streaming, but uh, you know you know how it is. It's been uh, it's been a busy day. So let's start with what should we start with? Should we start with let's start with a try hack me box because I wanted to do um, like a basic remote code execution to kind of take you through a couple of different things. Um, and then we'll do the CTF that I built, and fingers crossed that that works. Because you know, every time I spin up my own things, oops, uh, things break. So, so yeah, all good. Um, let's come into Firefox, and then let's come up to here and log into Try Hack Me. Log in. Log into my stream accounts, click log in, go to learn. Kind of sounds weird that I talk to myself, but I talk to myself all the time. It's uh it's a bit 
It's a bit strange. My cats look at me weirdly. They're like, are you talking to us? Are you going to feed us? No, you're talking to yourself. Okay, crazy human. Um, so if I, like I say, if I, I've scrolled to the bottom of the chat now, so apologies if I... Um, if I missed your your question, um, I'm going to try and if it was a good question, you know, just just drop it in again, and I'll try and try and get to it. Um, best websites, pen testing tool. Uh, so, what do you mean, like the best websites for like practicing web pen testing, or the best like online web hacking tool? Because I suppose a few tools are like web based, if that makes sense. But uh, I'd definitely say, like, try Hack Me if you're getting started is the best place to start. And then, you know, move on to Hack the Box or Proving Grounds once you've got um, a good foundation, I think, is, uh, is a good way to go. Ah, oh, this is, this is an interesting question. Um, yeah, do the PMPT. I think, like, the really nice thing about PMPT is it sets you up for if you go in day one and, and somebody's like, hey, please do a pen test on this network, you actually have some idea of where to start, what steps to go through, and uh, and how to um, how to do it. So yeah, do the do the PMPT. I think this is probably the best way to um, to get uh, you know to get up to speed. Oh, come on, Andrew, <laughs> you can't drop this. Where am I? Uh, let me come back to try hack me. No, I'm still still top two percent. In fact, I've gone down in ranks. I was like thirty one thousand, and now I'm thirty five thousand. I've been slacking. So, yeah, maybe I'll do. I should do like a twenty four hour stream, and then uh, try and like you know, can I get to top one percent in twenty four hours? That would be um, that would be a fun, a fun stream to do. So let me connect. Uh, to this, not like last week where I forgot to um, uh, connect to the VPN. Whoops. Let's just do dash A and then output normal scan dot initial. All right, so let's just scan this box, and while it's scanning, we can uh, we can chat a little bit more. So. Ooh, app spoofing. Actually, you know, I haven't app spoofed for like at least five years, so I can't really remember. So sorry, sorry about that. I did learn to to do app spoofing. There's a tool you can use, obviously. It's like um, can't remember, but you know, it's uh, it's out of scope on a lot of pen tests. So <laughs> I like this. The password length is like Shakespeare poetry of love. It could be. I, I mean, I use a password manager, so it's just like a random, you know, a random string. But um, but yeah, I mean, who knows? I am into my super long, uh, super long passwords. All right, so we've got eighty open and eighty eighty, and so okay, so Apache two point four. Uh, yeah, I can't remember that exact release. And eighty eighty, and it says it's open proxy. So we got this title: simple image gallery system. Let's take a look at this. So this box, I think, is quite easy. I've seen it before. Um, so I kind of have a rough idea of of, of what to do, but um, I haven't solved it. So if we get stuck, then you know you guys can just help me out, and we're all good. Um, but we get this default page, and then we get 8080. We'll let that run for a second. All I'm going to do is fuff dash u http slash slash. So for those that don't know, basically um, FFUF, we're doing some directory busting. So what it's going to do is it's going to go to HTTP 10, 10, 10, uh, sorry, 10, 10, 1, 9, 6, 59. And then where the keyword fuzz is, it's going to replace this with like different keywords. So it will be like ad, slash admin, slash dashboard, slash WordPress, slash robots, and all sorts of things. And it's basically going to tell us what endpoints um, 
may or may not exist uh, at this on this machine. Although, I've, why is this hanging? It's a bit, a little bit odd, and it looks like this is hanging as well. So let me just check. Oh, something's gone wrong. One nine six five nine. Is that what we wanted? Oh yeah, it is one nine six five nine. We haven't crashed the box already, have we? All right, well, let's give it a second to um, to chill. Uh, what is dot gash file extension? I don't know. Google will tell you what that is. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, yeah. Don't forget the VPN this time. I got it. I got it. I got the VPN. I le I learned from my my uh, my mistakes. And uh, this this seems like dangerous to um, to Google on on stream. So just just type it into into Google and it'll tell you. I'm sure you'll get a good answer. Um, oh yeah. Haha. <laughs> Thank you for the heads up, Adriana to remove uh, comments from the view. There we go. All right, now, now you can see a little bit better um, what's what's happening. So this is interesting how this didn't work. So let's try this again. All right, so it's working now. So I don't know, maybe the box is still loading up, but um, there was obviously uh, a problem. Uh, Yeah, sorry about that. You know me, I forget things. I just, it's all good. Oh, so this box is called gallery. So it's this one. Here we are. All right, so while this is scanning. Ah, and we have slash gallery. So we have 10, 10, 1, 9, 6, 5, 9. And so let's go and check this out. And I've just seen a, another good question. So we'll see what this gives us. Um, what do I bring in my backpack when I go on a pen test? Um, not much, like a laptop and a spare laptop. Um, your, uh, Ethernet cables because I didn't really do I've never really done like proper physical penetration testing so it's usually you just you just go on site connect to the Wi-Fi or connect to the network and then either they'll give you a laptop with a user on it or um, you just connect in and then start enumerating seeing what you can find testing and things like that so yeah a spare laptop definitely worthwhile because sometimes the Wi-Fi just doesn't play ball and just having a, another laptop to open up is um, you know, has saved me once or twice because sometimes, like, you don't want to spend three hours of your first pen test, like, trying to figure out why you can't connect to the wireless because of some crazy configuration. So, yeah, having a spare is definitely uh, worthwhile. And, you know, if you spill coffee over it, then, you know, your client's not going to be really, really angry. All right, so we get this, um, this page here. And every time I get to this page, um, I see, like, a login system. I think um, if it's external, then probably like admin admin isn't going to work. But for like internal systems, uh, especially if you're if you're on a pen test and you've already got like a foothold in the network, a lot of internal systems will will have default credentials. You know, you'll be logging into Greylog or you'll be logging into a webcam or or you know some printer interface. Um, so often they have um, default creds. It looks like something's happening here, but it's just it's just chilling. I think my internet is a little bit slow today. Or it's the try hack me boxes is a little bit slow. That's not to worry. If it if it doesn't pick up, we'll um we'll switch to uh to another machine. So let's give it a minute. So yeah, I mean, it kind of is. I suppose Fuff is technically like brute force because we're sending lots of requests and trying to find uh, trying to find something. So obviously, if your like bug bounty target is like, please throttle, please don't send more than five requests a second, you can have to think about uh, reducing the number of requests. But it's not brute force in that it's not going to lock out any accounts and, and things like that. And most web servers should be able to deal with basic, you know, directory busting. So it's fairly safe. 
Um, why two laptops? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I picked up from this one, and then how do I connect to? Oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong one. But I will come back to this one. <laughs> how do I connect to this box when you're not on network? You have to be on the network VPN. That's the uh, that's the trick. Ten ten is a reserved IP range, right? Um. Yeah, really good question. What are my thoughts on, hold on, I'm going to try and like, oh, okay, something happened. Let me just try this once again. I think my internet's just a bit tricky. There we go. Um, I haven't done it yet. I haven't really looked into it too much. I will try and look at it at some point this week so that we can talk about it on our next stream, but apologies. Um, yeah, I haven't really had much insight in that. I've obviously seen it pop up, but I haven't you know, dived into it yet. If only I had unlimited time, that would be uh, that would be good. So here we could set up some basic brute force, uh, try and see whether we get locked out. Um, it's nice to see that it says incorrect username or password rather than like the username admin doesn't exist. So that's good to see. Another thing that I usually check is I have this nice little plugin called Wapalizer. Um, there's a few others I can't remember. There's like Botweb or some other stuff. I don't know, but um, it's telling me kind of the technology stack. So it's telling me it thinks it's Ubuntu. We have this JavaScript framework toaster, which I've never used, um, full calendar widgets, PHP TypeScript, uh, some fonts, the Apache 2.4.29, which probably matches our Nmap scan, jQuery 3, uh, moment.js and sweet let too. So if you see some like frameworks and stuff in there, you can start looking at, okay, uh, what are the versions of this? Are they vulnerable? Or you can start thinking about what kind of attacks you might want to pull off. So, you know, when you see PHP, you're going to be thinking about different attacks than, you know, if you saw a Java application, for example. So kind of understanding this, and then also the simple image gallery system. Um, if I was on a live pen test, I'd probably Google, I'd probably try and find out, is this open source? Um, I'm a big fan of, of open source applications because I like doing code review. Um, but this is definitely something that uh, I would look at as well and do a little bit of more enumeration. Um, we can also start thinking about like basic SQL injection. So we can just do like quotes or one equals one, which is really unlikely to work on external applications, although you know, very occasionally you might find a, an application that, that has this. Uh, but on internal applications, you know, if you're on a pen test and you're testing the internal network, there are so many legacy applications uh, that you might be able to break into using SQL injection. And obviously, password reuse is a really huge thing for internal network pen tests. So if you break some janky old internal app that has like some calendar for lunch menus or something like this, and you manage to dump some passwords out of it, you might find that a privileged user is using the same password for their domain account as they are for this you know, janky 2005 web application. So this is, you know, Internal web apps, uh, obviously, like I think a lot of people don't look at them so much, but they can be quite fruitful, uh, if that makes sense. And we'll give this another second to load, and I'll answer some more uh, some more questions. So it's like lazy lazy man's OSINT. Uh, how do I say it, in it? Jacko or Jaco? Um, apologies if I if I said it wrong. Uh, I'm actually from the UK, but uh, if you yeah, you can find out. You can you can Google who's this TCM guy. You'll find out where I'm where I'm from. Uh, the name of this box is Gallery, so it's this one. Nice straightforward RC. Um, although, given how slow it is, we might be moving on to another box very soon. Um, same network happens on Proving Grounds. Yeah, Proving Grounds can be a little bit um, buggy, unfortunately. Uh, this is a great question, Andrew. So I think, yeah, basically I run everything through a proxy basically from when I start. Um, but I'm a bit like gung-ho with clearing out my proxy traffic. Um, I do like to see just in case there's some like weird request. I kind of like once I've signed up, logged in, clicked around the main functionality, I do scroll down and, and skim through just to see whether there's any like weird looking requests. Um, that you know warrant further investigation could be like 
you know, include dot dot slash includes, you know, english.php or french.php or something, something weird like that, where you're like, ah, there's a really easy, like, local file inclusion vulnerability. So I will I will skim through and also to get an idea of whether um, the application is using like APIs or whether it's um, uh, making calls to external hosts and then things like this or like to a CDN. Um, so yeah, basically, long story short, I, I basically proxy everything. But then once I've skimmed through, I just clear it out and then I start kind of like focusing on, on different things. And wow, that actually worked. <laughs> I was expecting just to get an error, um, but we have SQL injection. So let me explain what happens. Uh, do you want this to restore variable data? Nope. So our username was uh, like admin or one equals one. And I think I put a hash. So Probably it's MySQL running on the back end since uh, this hash does also work for, for others. And I suspect what's happened is, is the statement is like select a star from users where username equals username and password equals password. And what we've done is we've taken this statement. Let me make this like this. And we've inserted, in fact, it's probably like this. In my experience, this is uh, this is what happens. Or maybe the whole thing is quoted. You know, it could be double quotes. Who knows? But what we've done is we've put a quote. We've put admin quotes or one equals one, and then cut out the rest of the statements like this, so that disappears. And so here we get select all from users where username equals admin or true because one equals one is true. And that basically is like the classic SQL injection bypass, um, which you probably won't find very often outside of CTF, but you might find it on internal um, web application pen or, or like, um, sorry, internal pen tests on like old legacy systems that you find uh, inside. Um, so yeah, we have this like simple image gallery system and in the bottom right, and you can't see it because my camera's in the way. Maybe I can like just do this. Uh, we see we have gallery version 1.0 by alrightnum23 at gmail.com. So I was hoping there'd be a GitHub link there so that we can see some source code. But at this point, we have a couple of options. We could maybe click around, try and figure out vulnerability. Um, or we could take a look and see whether we can see whether there are any publicly available exploits for this particular um, application. So I'm going to go with this latter and see what we can find. So usually the easiest way to do that is just to search exploit, and then we can go simple image gallery. And this comes up with some results. And I'm just going to, oh yeah, what web? This is, uh, this is what I was talking about before, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just coughing, um, which is like an alternative to uh, Wapalizer. And uh, oh yeah, for those who asked, um, yeah, you can find the recording on YouTube. So if you just go to the Cyber Mental YouTube channel, uh, go to the live tab, you should be all good. And I think, yeah, so at the bottom, we had simple image gallery uh, one, and we have two here. So we have this uh, SQL injection, which I suspect is the SQL injection that we just found, uh, although it says ID here rather than like username, password, or, or login. So this could be slightly different. And then we have this remote code execution, RC unauthenticated. So let's just take a look at this. So I'm just gonna copy this and then search exploit, examine, and then hit enter, and we can take a look at the um, the available exploits. So import requests, random string, JSON from BS4, import beautiful soup, set up the URL, and then it sets up a payload here. So doo -doo -doo. looks like it just adds this PHP and then adds this, grabs this from the uh, get request, and then obviously adds the command, and then slash pre, and then and then kills the script. 
session equals request a session print login bypassed okay so here's a request your classes login do, 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 do. shell name join print out some stuff okay there's a users.php so that looks like the vulnerable endpoints which is slash classes slash users.php and then print something cd who am i okay interesting looks fairly well written which is nice so we might not get any errors when running it but you know who knows we, all, we always get random issues uh, ah okay so here this is interesting so it actually looks like it's going to slash classes login.php f equals login and then it's actually sending the exact same payload that we used to bypass uh with SQL injection. So that's a nice uh, happy coincidence that we actually found this vulnerability already and it's using the same vulnerability to authenticate. And then it's gonna, looks like it's uploading a shell or like a, like a web shell basically rather than a full shell. So let's give it a try and see, and, and see what happens. Um, so let's do Python 3, oops. What we need to do first is mirror it to our drive. And then let's do Python 3, 5, 0. I'm just going to hit enter. And then we get targets. So our target is 10, 10, 1, I wonder if uh, we probably need this slash gallery because when we go to that, it goes to like the top level page, which is the Apache login page. So uh, we'll give it a second, see if it figures it out, because it might add it already. I didn't see it in the source code, but um, um, let's see. Ah, oh, WhatWeb is a good tool. Okay, I should try WhatWeb because I've never really used it, so. Um, Oh yeah, the box is definitely really slow for some reason. <laughs> They're manually checking if the pass. <laughs> yeah, this. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it looks like that probably isn't going to work. Let me try this again with ten ten one nine six dot fifty nine and then slash gallery like this oh okay that was much faster so that's that's what we like um maybe they should have set like a timeout so they give us this shell url now i wonder we might take a look see if we can do this uh, manual and we get code execution nice so as you can see we get dub 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 data and then we have like ls and we can execute commands on the host which is nice so uh, let's have a look at Etsy past WD. We can see this mic user. That's probably what we want to do. So yeah, really like this is probably the most straightforward like code execution that you can get. Um, like I say, you probably won't find this on like um, hardened external production systems. Maybe occasionally you might find that like they're using some. Um, some dependency or some something that hasn't been updated in a while and you can use that you know it's part of the framework and it hasn't been it hasn't been changed but um on an internal pen test like once you're once you've breached the perimeter you'll see um you'll see things like this quite a lot especially depending on the application the larger larger the organization the more crazy stuff you'll find on uh, on an internal pen test so uh, yeah it's definitely um that's definitely it. Um, I think, so I suspect what's actually happened is we have these albums. Let's, let's just see if we can replicate the, uh, oh, this is going to take forever. 
I was wondering if we could just like upload a shell because it looks like um, briefly having looked at the source code that it just uploads a, um, a PHP file. And I presume it just uses these albums or archives to like upload a, uh, upload a shell. Let's see. I'll give it a second and then. Yeah, this is a really good point, actually. So because of the database the application uses, sometimes hash doesn't work. So depending on the version and depending on the DB, you have to use a different um, uh, like comment or, or I'm not sure what the word is, but basically like, you know, character that, that um, makes the rest of the line comments. But if you go to port swigger and supply cheat sheet, so here, uh, yeah, you've got the different comment types. And this isn't complete. So um, yeah, here we've got MySQL, so you can use the hash. And then again, it says note the space after the double dash. So when I do this, I always do um, like you have your query. Yeah, you know, sometimes things get trimmed. So you actually need to pass the space afterwards. So if you do dash dash space dash, um, your space isn't going to get trimmed off your query. So kind of like a, a, a nice, neat little trick to make sure that you know, you're not passing this space and then your application just takes it off and then it doesn't count as a, um, as a comment at the end. And then, yeah, yeah, slash um, star hash slash star dash 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 dash. And then, uh, yeah, so it's a useful cheat sheet. You can use things like, like here. You can actually use the same here. So version open parentheses close or open close brackets. Same for MySQL. So it's not 100% complete, but this is a good place to start if you're looking at, at different uh, databases, basically. Portswig is a great resource, uh, of course. Our uh, connection timed out. Come on, gallery. Let's go. All right. Uh, let's come to avatars. Yeah, it looks like we can upload files. Let me let me see if I can upload a shell real quick because uploading a shell and triggering it is going to be much easier than like playing around with shells in the URL. So we're just going to copy user share uh, web shells PHP PHP reverse shell. Grab our IP address, which is this fim PHP reverse shell. Get rid of all this junk at the top. And then insert our IP address. Let's just do four 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 four. Should work. And then I'm going to move this to like rev.php because it's going to be a bit simpler. All right. So let's see if this uh, this comes up. So if we just come to home and then gallery, change this to all files. Rev.php, save. It didn't look like there needed to be any bypass. So, oh, we need to have a listener. Where are we? Let's click on this. Yeah, and that triggers the shell. OK, so we get a shell. So nice and, nice and simple remote code execution. And um, if you're not trying to be stealthy at all, because um, you know, maybe if you're on like a, if you're a red teamer, then you might be trying to be stealthy. You don't want to write stuff to disk. Uh, this is kind of a more stable way, at least I find, uh, for getting uh, for getting a shell. So this is uh, this is always fun. All right, let me catch up with some questions, and then I have another a local challenge. So hopefully it won't be quite so um, quite so crazy, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated. And it's built in Node, so um, none of this PHP shenanigans uh, from like you know 2003. Um, any good questions in the chat? Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so you could uh, give some scenario about path traversal to RCE. So, yeah, sometimes like if you have a web service. Uh, and you send requests, and they're being um, like logged into like var log. 
uh, you can probably send something like send some PHP in your user agent, and then that gets written to var log, and then you can use path traversal to execute the, the file or load the file, and that will execute the um, the code that's sitting in log. I mean, there, there's loads of scenarios where path traversal and, and remote code execution can kind of be utilized together, but that's that's quite a like a, a nice trick. Um, I think it's called like log poisoning something. I can't remember the exact name of the attack, but it features in the, like a few CTFs. And I think there's one or two famous cases where um, it's actually happened. So um, if you can reach stuff outside of the root directory of the web server, then that's usually quite powerful. Or you can like just steal a SSH key with like path traversal or file inclusion, and then and then you're good to go. So. Um, Ah, uh, yeah, so I could do this. So actually, yeah, a lot of the time, if you can't upload uh, files, you can just like come into, I presume what you mean is come into here and just do like wget um, my IP slash netcat and then, and then just spawn another shell. Or I could just try, um, you know, yeah, it doesn't look like netcat's on this box, but, um, you know, Spawn, uh, spawn it from there. So there, there are like lots of different ways to to do it. Um, why don't you use Bash plus Netcat to spawn a shell in terminal? Because I'm lazy and I, I just I just have my own way of doing things. That's that's it. There, there's like probably like a thousand ways you can spawn a shell in this situation. So you know you just just got to choose choose what you go with, and choose the highest um, rates of success. Hello, if you just joined, so we're working on this uh, CTF on TryHackMe called Gallery. So uh, we managed to get a shell ready, but we're about to move on to our next challenge. So good to have you here. All right. Um, let me, whoops, need to shut this one down. Just realized I've got like a bunch of VMs all running. And I think the next one, what I'm going to do is I need to spin this up. Oh, it's already running. All right. Um, so I'm just switching to my other VM, which is here. This is my like personal VM, right? Which is not I didn't usually use for streaming, but I build stuff on there, so so we should be all good. All right, here it is. <laughs> Welcome to Cobra Kai, and uh, shout out to Mid Jenny for uh, for creating the uh, the graphics. Um, oh, just very quickly, your exploit isn't working, so I would say to troubleshoot. Have you double checked the IP address? Make sure that you're, uh, if you're working on the same box, um, we had to use slash gallery, right? Because the um, just the IP address went to the, like the Apache homepage. Um, and then other than that, make sure you're using the right version of Python. That's probably a good trick. If you get any error messages, that's also worth checking into. Make sure you've got dependencies installed. Although it was just things like requests and beautiful soup, so you should be should be good to go. So yeah, those are the kinds of things off the top of my head that um, you know uh, to check first. All right, um, let's see. So we have this welcome to Cobra Kai Karate Dojo where legacy meets modernity. Is that a word? Modernity, modernity. Um, and yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to sign up. So let's uh, create an account. What should we call this? Please like and sub. We'll paste this in here. And we get registration successful. And let's take a look. So we have this Cobra Kai Dojo. Students can view their account information. Senseis can access the administrative uh, interface. So this is kind of like, obviously, this is CTF, so it's giving us the hint that we need a higher privileged account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out, and I'm going to bring up that suite and start taking a look. 
and seeing what's happening during the account creation, see what is being used to authenticate us as a user. Maybe it's like a JSON web token. Maybe we can just change that, all sorts of things. But when you're doing a CTF, you know, always look out for those kinds of hints that basically tell you, here's the vulnerability, find your way to it. Uh, and from a learning perspective, that's really nice. Obviously, it's not, you know, in the real world, you're not going to get hints like that. You might get weird behavior in applications, which kind of shows you uh, where to go. But you're not going to get a, this is what you need to do, X, Y, Z, you know. Here's a, like a file conversion um, endpoint that is obviously going to be the way. So um, what is my opinion of Try Hack Me? I think it's a fantastic platform. Um, same with, you know, Hack the Box, same with Proving Grounds, same with, um, I think SciSec Labs um, was good, but I, if I recall, there, there hasn't been anything new on there for a while. I could be wrong because I haven't looked at it in, a, in quite a while. But yeah, I mean, there's more resources uh, than ever. So it's always really, really nice to learn lots of new things. All right. Um, what are we doing? Uh, proxy options. Ah, oh, yeah. Need to add. Let's add eighty eighty one. Okay. Switch on our proxy to here. Let's create a new account again. So, what should we call this one? Uh, let's just call it Cobra. Sign in. And then, actually, I was going to intercept the traffic, but it doesn't matter. Um, what we want to do is let's just sign in quickly and see proxy, HTTP history. And everything is green because I have the um, JWT plugin. So if you come to, uh, you can see it here, JWT editor keys. Uh, but if you come to extensions, the App Store, you can find the um, JWT editor uh, here as well. So. So if you're interested in that, then it's definitely uh, definitely worthwhile. So we have a couple of API endpoints. So API register, and pull these up a bit. And then we have API login slash dashboard. And then we have some like JS, which is probably handling the API requests. And the first thing I kind of notice is when we sign up, we have this account level. So we have this account student. So this could either come from a hidden form field um, or it's being added by the JavaScript when we call this endpoint. So the first thing I kind of think is, do we have mass assignments? Uh, can we just send this request and create a user account that has a different privilege level? Now, again, this is kind of like, I think we had a similar one um, maybe four or five weeks ago. Uh, on the Planet Express challenge, where we actually had to fuzz for this, and it was it was quite difficult. Um, but I think this one we can take the hint from uh, the admin panel, and uh, and maybe try with sensing. Let me um, answer a few more questions. So, for the most part, there's tons of free content on TryHackMe. So you know, uh, definitely get on there and give it a go. Not all of it is free, but a lot of it is. Um, how to not get frustrated when learning new things? Uh, yeah, good question. I don't know, just... The main thing for me is not to burn out. I try and be like consistent and not to worry too much about, you know, I don't have to do like 10 hours of study. If I just do like half an hour, hour a day on top of my normal day to day, then I'm very happy, you know? So as long as I have consistency, I know that I'm making progress, so I don't worry too much about like immediate results, if that makes sense. I could go a week without like you know solving any CTF, but I know that I'm getting better um, all the time. Um, let me just scroll down. So I'm a couple of minutes behind, but I can see a couple of questions. Yes, S strike first, strike hard, no mercy. That's that's what we want. Guys, also a uh, content creator, so uh, you can definitely check out uh, their YouTube channel. Uh, sorry, YouTube channel, the Twitch uh, streams. Uh, it's worth uh, worth dropping in. I've been in a couple of times. I tend to lurk on other streams, which is kind of weird. Like, um, same with the uh, the daily like cybersecurity update. Sometimes I say hi, um, but most of the time I'm a lurker. 
story of my life on Reddit. I'm like the world's longest uh, running lurk account. <laughs> I've never posted on Reddit. Great question. Uh, I'm in the top 2% on TryHackMe. Uh, should I try some real world bug bounties? Yes, you definitely should. Um, so obviously when you're doing bug bounties, you're not gonna get like, you know, not everything has a vulnerability. Not There's not stuff all everywhere. And you're probably gonna get applications that are much more complex. But I would say if you're working on a target and you are improving your understanding of that target and you're finding, you know, interesting things, even if they're not necessarily vulnerabilities, you're making progress. And I measure like the my understanding of an application um, uh, as a measurement of success, not necessarily finding vulnerabilities because vulnerabilities, you know, you might find five and then you might find none. It just, you know, it's kind of random where they are. But yeah, if you're in the top 2%, yeah, definitely. Um, you're, you're more than ready. Just just go for it. Um, and yeah, let me answer one more and then I'll, then I'll come back uh, to this app. So it becomes green when there's a JWT defect. No, it just becomes green when it detects a JWT in the actual request or response. So if we come down here, you can just see that we have this set cookie token um, and it returns this token here in the response as well. A bit weird that it's setting it as a cookie and returning the token, but that's my janky code for you. <laughs> I probably tried to do it as a uh, as a header and then decided to change it to a cookie. And then, yeah, as you can see, um, it actually sets this cookie. And then all of these are green because the uh... <coughs> sorry, just coughing. The token is in is in the other requests. Uh, it might turn different colors if something's broken, but um, but I can't remember off the top of my head. All right, so let's. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to this. There's some more good questions uh, as well, so I will I will get around to them. So let's do Kai and let's do Sensei and see if this. Uh, well, we get a registration successful, so that's good. Uh, we don't get an error saying, "Hey, you know, um, you can't register or you don't have privileges to register this kind of account." But the flip side is, this isn't necessarily a vulnerability yet because we haven't verified it. So always think you need to verify your vulnerabilities. This might say registration successful, and this might have just defaulted back to student, so we might just have a normal account still. So we always need to verify um, what we're doing, basically. Um, but let's let's do that. Let's delete this cookie. Uh, deletes, come back to here. I'm just using this um, like cookie editor plugin, by the way. There's there's a bunch of them available for Firefox where you can you can clear them out in the console or, or Burp Suite or whatever. Um, join already Kai and Kai. Obviously, if this is a real world application, Allowing three character passwords is, is is also a finding, you know that's uh, that's not very good, uh, not very good practice. And none of these endpoints are rate limited. There's no cross site request forgery tokens. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, we can see here that we have this upload photos. And again, this is a little bit CTFE in the you know we have this update server functionality, this upload photos. This wouldn't exist if it wasn't part of the CTF. So, you know, use it for training and learning purposes. But just remember, in the real world, you're going to have to work a little harder. But that doesn't mean, you know, when, whenever you're doing bug bounty or a web app pen test, file upload functionality should be like, you know, definitely test that because, you know, that's where, where things can go wrong. Um, file uploads, um, random includes, what else? Uh, authentication, access control, checking for IDOR and BOLA. Those are all really, really important things that you definitely have to check for. Cross-site scripting, um, you know, every time you see an input, you know, you should be putting in scripts. I would say that try not to use um, alert one so much. I would prefer to use um, prompt or like prompt one because Alert one is blocked everywhere and anywhere. And you might be like, ah, oh, alert one doesn't work. It's not vulnerable to cross-site scripting. But they might actually just be filtering that keyword. So uh, because alert one is so like infamous, um, there are other payloads that you should be testing. Obviously, if you can just use a um, you know, a scanner like Burp Suite Scanner, it's probably gonna detect stuff anyway. But 
yeah, you can you can do stuff like that. And again, if you're if you have uh, characters that have been filtered out, then image source equals x on error. Um, prompt one is a really good like payload that doesn't have any quotes, doesn't have any double quotes, doesn't use the keyword like script or, or slash script, doesn't use those. So, so this is a good payload um, to remember for testing as well. And in your notes, you should have like a list of payloads or a list of things that you want to test and, and why you want to test them. So anywhere where you see some text is reflected back onto the page or you can store something, like you can send a message or a comment or a forum post, you need to be testing for cross-site scripting. All right, um, let's see. Uh, where was I? <laughs> I've completely lost my train of thought. I went into a whole like spiel about some stuff. Um, so upload photos. So we can choose photos, upload them, and then we have this folder. So we have upload slash Cobra Kai. So I'm just going to verify that. There's a Cobra Kai.png. OK. So what we might want to do is we might want to upload a, if this is a PHP application, we would want to try and upload a PHP file, and then we'd just browse to it and be like, hey, shell.php. But with Node, that's not how Node works. You, If you just go to like slash JS, then it's just going to um, uh, give you the text. or at the best case scenario, you can run something locally in your browser, which is not what you want, right? We want execution server side. So what we need to do is when we have file upload, I would say um, node applications are probably generally speaking less vulnerable just because it's harder to get the payloads to execute. But since we have this update server, warning this should only be done by admins only, this is probably going to execute our JavaScript file. So you know, just again, from um, from a CTF, if you have your CTF hat on, you know, find these two uh, issues and, and map them together. So what we want to do is let's do Node.js reverse shell. Let's see what we can find. Um, It's a bunch of really good questions. I'll get to them soon, I promise. Um, and here, yeah, so we've got node-e, and then we have these. But we don't need the node-e. I think we can probably just take this. And then let's just come into Mousepad to make life easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this as a .js file, try and upload it, and then try to execute it. Um, and fingers crossed. It works, but we'll we'll see. So we want four 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 four, and then we need our local IP address. So this is the shell from from before. We can just close this. And since we're working across boxes, uh, what we actually want is we want my virtual network. So ten ten one hundred one three two, I think. And I'm hoping that these VMs can actually talk to each other <laughs> because the application is hosted in uh, one of the others. But given that they're both on the same um, uh, like range, you can see that this one is, where are we? 10, 10, 100, 1, 4, 6. Yeah, they're, they're in the same like uh, subnet. Um, this could work. So let's let me just copy this and then bin uh, rev.js, paste this in, and then fingers crossed. Let's come back to here, browse, um, where are we? We were in gallery, weren't we? rev.js, and then upload. Ah, we get a burp suite error, which is not ideal. So let's come back to dashboard. See what happened. Looks like it did upload, though. So I mean, it could be that maybe it just uploaded an empty file. Um, but let's let's see what's uh, let's see what's happening. See if we can go to it directly. 
And this is what I mean. So if this was PHP, this would execute, and we'd be like, huzzah, you know, we, we have a reverse shell, great. But because it's JavaScript and we're running Node, we actually need to uh, find another way to execute this. So we're going to come back to our dashboard. Oops. And then I think what we're going to do is we're just going to try and copy and paste this, set up a listener. Oops. And then execute. And we get failed to execute script. Sorry if the text is a little bit small, so let me read it out to you. Failed to execute script, cannot find module, dot slash uploads slash rev dot JS. Require stack user source app server.js. So there's actually two slashes here. So let's try again, but without the starting slash. And again, we get cannot find module. So we're going to have to do a little bit of fuzzing to actually find out where on the system this exists. And what I suspect is happening is, once again, this is a more modern application. So we don't just have like bar dub 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 HTML and then everything in here, like slash uploads and you know your your index.php is here and you can just be like ah oh, okay i just want to go to um slash upload slash whatever whatever um probably what this is doing is you probably have like a server or index.js and then you probably have something like a public folder that's being mounted and then in public you have like uploads and then some other some other stuff, and then you have loads of like. So the file structure and the way modern applications is built is different to like your classic PHP applications. And obviously, I built this application, so I know that it's running in Docker. So again, the structure and the way it works and 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 everything might be a little bit different. So whenever you see something like this, you kind of have to think: what technology is it? What's the typical um, layout, or what's the typical hierarchy or folder structure or directory structure for that technology. Um, and you know, maybe just go and look at like how to build a Node.js application. And that might give you some insight into how things are structured. Um, if you see that it's using Express in like the headers, where, where if we go, where do we go? Uh, do we get like an Express header? Ah, here we are. X yeah, powered by Express, you know that might tell us some information about how the routing is done or how it's handling uh, requests and and things like this. So so really important to kind of understand the details and and modern development, which is kind of why I say to a lot of people, hey, learning a bit of JavaScript, learning a bit of modern development is really really going to help you because otherwise, beyond the really old but gold vulnerabilities, you're going to find it quite hard to step up to modern applications, which are much harder to exploit and there's much there are many more layers of abstraction that you kind of have to deal with and just having a basic understanding of those is going to do you wonders um so let's see if we can find this file um here we get this and what i want to do is actually i don't want to execute this file let's see if we can try and find logo.png so here we're going to change this to logo.png because I suspect if we try and execute logo.png, it's just going to throw an error. But if I'm fuzzing and I send a bunch of requests to trigger my reverse shell uh, and I trigger it multiple times, I might crash the application. So again, I'm kind of just thinking, what's the safest way to test this? And what I assume is that we need to have something like this. Whoops, why are we not in Intruder? Let's come to Intruder. Clear this, um, and I'm going to see whether we have something here. And then if we can't find that, we might have to go further back and do like a more complex fuzzing where we do like a, uh, what they call like a pitchfork or a cluster bomb. Or I always forget the different types. They're all explained here, but I don't know. My brain refuses to remember them. So we'll come in, and then let's try the directories long. And we can just click Start. And while that's running, I'll, uh, I'll answer some questions. Um, so this is a good question. Starting off trying to break, uh, when is enough knowledge to, for pen testing? So 
I don't know, like if you're going for like an entry level role, obviously you're not expected to know loads and loads and you'll probably have a mentor or like a senior pen tester overseeing you and, and teaching you things and, and things like this. Um, so, you know, in that situation, it really depends on, um, you know, who's around you. Don't, don't get, if you can get an opportunity to work, you know, in pen testing and, and learn new things, you know, just, just go for it. Like, don't, don't feel like you need to, you know, study lots more. Um, am I into IoT? Not, not really, I suppose. Like, I hope, like, I find it interesting, but it's not really like my, uh, my area, like in my day-to-day -day work, if that makes sense. You know, I like to do some like IoT stuff, like at CTFs, but I'm not like a IoT hacking professional, if that makes sense. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see what else we have. Can I speak Vietnamese? No. My, my Japanese is okay. It's like passable. I lived in Tokyo for a few years. Um, but, uh, but yeah, maybe on if you go onto YouTube and watch the VOD, you can probably the closed captions or like you can switch languages. I don't know whether it's um, whether it uh, does that automatically for you. Top 7% and you feel like, yeah, I mean, to be honest, we all feel like that. Like imposter syndrome is a big thing, right? It's really, it's really tough. So don't worry about it. Uh, just try and learn new things and, and keep, keep going forward. Be consistent. Uh, good question here. So I think it did a, a SMB relay attack, captured the NTLM hash of the service, but why does the service send its hash to authenticate to a fake SMB share? So because I presume SMB signing isn't enabled, and so it doesn't know that it's like a, uh, a rogue or a fake share, if that makes sense. So a lot of systems don't have knowledge of what else is on the system and, and whether they're legitimate or not. So. Uh, same with some of like, uh, I suppose it's like with ARP tables and things like that, there's not really, this is kind of like going <laughs> back back in time for me when I was studying more like this kind of pen testing. Um, it doesn't know that, you know, when, when somebody broadcasts something that whether the person doing it is nefarious or not, because there's no register of like, this person's legitimate, this person's not legitimate, this service is okay, this service isn't okay. So that's basically why. Same with wireless endpoints. Like when you connect to like a wireless endpoint, it's just gonna check the name. Like it doesn't know like whether that's a legitimate endpoint or not. It's just it's just gonna connect to it and be like, hey, hotel 101, let's go. And that's you know, whichever signal is the strongest, you'll you'll connect to that one. Yeah, this is I totally agree with you, uh, Metazino. Uh, hack the box is good, uh, for, but it's it's too much to begin with. So try hack me is, is a bit better. Um, of course, IPSEC video is really, really good. Um, so that's definitely a great resource, but I think try hack me is, is best to start out on. So. Um, do, 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 do. All right, let's. Uh, um, all right, one more question and then Oh, this is a cool comment there. Let me highlight this. So file upload to my favorite followed by broken access controller. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I totally, those are definitely two things to um, to look out for and they're definitely high on my list as well. So, and uh, which box made it? This is like a, a, a local CTF that, that I built. So I'll make this, whoops, I'll make this available um, in the coming weeks on, uh, on Try Hack Me. So, all right, um, so, Everything looks like it's 500, but we might get something. We didn't get anything interesting. The length here, if we filter by length, it looks like public is a lot lower than everything else. Because everything else is 535 in terms of response length. 535 up to 370. So, yeah, this is like a big outlier, even though there is a range. So obviously between 50 and 70, that's like a 20 character range difference. But here we've got like 50 characters below. So I think slash public is probably um, what we need. So let's try public slash uploads rev.js. Let me make sure that we have our shell listening. 
quick executes. Yeah, and we get script executed successfully. And we get a shell. Nice. Job done. So yeah, within like Node applications, obviously, you need a way to execute the JavaScript, which is more like you can't just browse to it, if that makes sense. So um, it's a little bit more tricky, but um, good to know. And obviously, yeah, this is quite a useful. Uh, you can add these payloads. So Node.js reverse shells uh, with single quotes, double quotes, backticks. And in this case, you know, obviously what's supposed to happen here is this application is supposed to take this JS file and that's used to update the application or, or the server. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, box done, I suppose. Oops, where do we come back? I don't think there's much on here. Oh, we can Python 3, so uh, Python 3 dash C imports pty pty dot spawn bin bash yeah here we are and you can tell we're inside a docker container look at the the name of the host is kind of like a um an indicator and then we have the docker emb so docker environments and yeah it's just, it's just really obvious that we're obviously Really obvious that we're obviously inside a uh, inside a Docker container. So um, so yeah, that's kind of it for the the practical hands-on stuff. Um, so let me um, let me answer a few more questions before we finish up. And uh, let me pop on the the chat overlay. So. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so there's been a lot of questions about bug bounty today, and I just want to say, like, I don't often, like, I do dabble in bug bounty, but it's not, like, my main field. I'm not somebody, like, um, you know, obviously drop into, like, Naham Sex Stream or, or um, like, Jason Haddocks. Those guys are obviously, like, really, really good at bug bounty, so definitely take their advice over mine. Um, obviously, application security engineering is is my background, so a little bit of a different focus. But uh, the filters, if you're just starting out, um, find a program that's regularly updated, I think, for me, would be the main thing I was looking for. If you see a application hasn't been updated in six months and lots of people have looked at it, you know, chances are you might find something, but chances are, you know, um, a lot of things have already been found and it's well hardened. But if a team is like pushing updates to production every two weeks, then yeah, you can set up some uh, automation. You can figure out what's been updated if they don't have release notes. And then you can be like the first to that target. So I definitely say that that's, um, that's one. Um, I would stay away from stuff where you have to purchase things because going through like all the refund process would be awkward and annoying. Um, and I would say pick something that has some interesting functionality, not something that like a blog website. I mean, there's only so many things, right, that can go wrong with a blog website. Um, so pick something that's not massive, but has some kind of unique or interesting functionality. Um, I was working on some stuff the other day where you create an account and you get like a, a whole subdomain to yourself and there's quite a lot of functionality in there. And obviously there's a lot to look at, but that makes it kind of interesting. So yeah, that's those are kind of like the main things I would say um, uh, are to look out for. Yes, sweep the leg. <laughs> sweep the leg with no chest. I'm going to put that in my notes. Uh, I'm going to put this, um, this uh, reverse shell and I'm going to call it sweep the leg. All right. Um, oh, this is a good question. So, yeah, for for general for live streaming, I use um, I use Kali because it makes sense because like a lot of people use it, and you can easily you know follow along. This machine here, though, um, this is actually uh, what is it? It's Debian. And I use this to uh, I use this for a lot of development work, and I use it for a lot of web uh, hacking. So, and I use i3, so you can. Whoops, I just killed my PC. No, oh, we're good. Um, so you know, I can easily like pull up like different terminals and stuff, and and do different things. And I quite like i3. It's it. I like to kind of keep on the keyboard, 
because uh, I don't like using the mouse so much. My my wrist is not as good as uh, as it used to be. I think I got a bit of RSI or something at some point. Um, so I think Kali is great and it's it's really useful. But if you want something more custom to like your workflow, then you know it's it's not a bad idea to dabble in something else like Debian or Ubuntu or or, or even just Windows. Just set it up how you want it. Um, do, 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 do. Ah, interesting. Okay, so I at some point over the next few months, I am releasing like a uh, AppSec explains. Like I'm make, going through all of my notes, taking out all of the confidential information in them, and making them publicly available. So in there, um, at some point, if um, this will be available, but it's it's not quite ready yet. Uh, but it, it basically shows you my whole setup, all of the common vulnerabilities I look for, all of the checklists I use. Um, it's actually quite a lot of work going through all of my old notes. So not yet, but I, I will have this for you uh, at some point. Um, oh, yeah, this is an interesting point. Yeah, it is possible for a service to be misconfigured to execute JS directly from the node CGI. So um, yeah, I don't think I've seen this in the wild before, but I definitely, yeah, you can you can definitely make it work for sure. So this is um, something to be aware of that, yeah, this could happen for sure. Um, all right, a couple more questions and then we'll finish up for today. I know it's a little bit earlier than usual, but uh, we got through our boxes quite quite quickly today. Oh no, if you missed the question, I'm not sure, maybe I did. But you can uh, check the VOD on, on uh, YouTube. That's uh, that's your best uh, best bet. I think, oh yeah, I did answer this question. Um, it's coming soon. I, I'm, create, I'm releasing like a big uh, list of all of my stuff, but it's just not quite ready yet. So in the coming weeks or, or maybe next month, when I have a little bit more free time to finish it up, we should be uh, should be good to go. Uh, do I recommend going to college or self-learning? Um, good question. I think it depends where you are in the world, for one. Uh, and two, I think, yeah, Heath was talking about this on his stream and, and gave a really good uh, insight, which is like opportunity cost. So if you spend three years going through college, you rack up quite a bit of debt, um, and you're three years behind, you know, you're not making three years of salary, then maybe it's, it's better to self-learn. But that's meaning that, you know, can you um, actually do, you know, can you catch up in the long run and, and things like that? So I think in the UK, obviously, going to university is quite accessible. Uh, and uh, we don't have crazy amounts of, of debt from like student loans. I still have a student loan debt, but I just pay it off like a little bit at a time. It's not, you know, it doesn't cause me any stress or worry. And if I, if I lose my job, I don't have to pay it. Like it kind of gets frozen, which is quite nice. But if you are in some places in the world, it could be like financially crippling. So again, think about it, but um, there's no one right answer. Both paths are viable. So that's that's kind of the main the main thing to think about. Are there many cybersecurity jobs in Japan? Um, not if you don't speak Japanese. <laughs> uh, I would say if you are in Japan, if you're in Tokyo, um, the big tech companies. Uh, uh, so I, I worked for Rakuten, the big tech company in Tokyo. Um, they obviously there's there's good security. They, they have a really good security team. There's some really amazing people there. So I, I definitely recommend checking that out. The big four. So um, obviously big consultancies. Microsoft have an office there. Um, there are some companies like Goldman Sachs and things like that. So if you don't have the high level of Japanese, there are opportunities. Uh, just just less of them, and they tend to be larger international companies, uh, if that makes sense. So so yeah, there, there are definitely opportunities. You kind of need to be over there usually to be able to get a job. So you kind of like visit the country and then do your interviews. It's actually very difficult to get hired from abroad uh, in uh, in Japan. So so yeah. Um, Uh, as a beginner, your best bet is, let me bring up YouTube. So my videos are quite random. <laughs> so unless you're doing like the courses, um, 
like YouTube can be like, there's lots of different things. So, uh, but if I actually load eventually, I'm kind of glad that I'm using a VM. I'm not like signed into my personal YouTube channel uh, or YouTube account here because it'll give you like all of the, the weird things that I watch. Like, uh, is it cake where they like make fake things? And, and uh, anyway, uh, the Cyber Mentor 15 Hours 2023. If you're just starting out, where is it? Yeah, do this one. Um, ethical Hacking 15 Hours Part 1, Part 2. This is your best place to go because it's going to be like um, a pathway rather than like bits from all over the place, if that makes sense. So, um, all right, let's see. Two more questions. Sorry if I didn't get to around to everybody. Um, oh, actually, this is a great question. If you're, if you've kind of done like a lot of port swigger stuff and you want to learn more, uh, if you want to like dive into the code review uh, or you want to do some of the other um, modules that they have, then definitely. I think Pentester Lab is a great resource. So I feel like uh, if you're just starting out, stick to Portswigger, do try hack me and things like that. But once you're kind of like a intermediate web hacking level, um, Pentester Lab is your next like your next step. So um, I'm a big fan of it. I really I really like the platform. Um, if I had more time, I'd spend a lot more time on it. But um, yeah, so I've done a bunch of the badges though, and I think the the content is really high quality. So highly recommend. Um, oh, this is a great question. So for web frameworks, usually it's a web dev simplified. This channel here is a great place to start. And also, I think Coding with Mosh has a, uh, a good course on like coding patterns and architecture, if I recall. Um, but this channel actually is a really great way of getting um, up to speed on a lot of web stuff. So like, um, he's got a really great video on like uh, JSON web tokens, and then like uh, loads of different things. But if you if you search, you'll find. You know, there's obviously a lot of stuff that you know maybe is not um, not important, but you'll find some like architecture stuff and all sorts of things uh, on here. So I really like this channel. Um, it's a really good way of getting up to speed on like modern topics very quickly. So um... ah yeah yeah. So so this question, just to answer again. Um, I have a list that's going to be released at some point along with all my other notes, but I'm going through it and taking out all of like the confidential information, if that makes sense. So it'll be available um, in the coming months. It's just not quite ready yet. So, um, but yeah, I mean, for web hacking, Burp Suite is 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 usually like use that. Um, Firefox containers is is quite useful. Um, uh, you can start using Kaido, which is is looking like a really good tool. Um, Outside of that, I don't use that many tools, to be honest. I mean, obviously, I use Docker and and, and things like that to spin up local things to do like research or, or test um, open source software. But for web hacking, you just you just need a good proxy, and uh, and away you go. Um, all right, two more questions. Two more questions. Let's go. Let me um, switch my. How do I switch my camera back? What's going on? Oops. Do, 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 do. I'm having a weird day today. There we go. OK. Whew. Everything's it's all working. Um, recommended training for, OK, so Traversy Media is really, really good, or Coding with Mosh uh, is really, really good as well. So I would recommend those two. Um, I think Traversy. Let me switch back again. <laughs> Uh, Traversy Media, and they they both have like courses on Udemy, but also I think like Traversy obviously has a lot of stuff on YouTube, so he has a lot of free content, and uh, coding with Mosh. I don't know if he uh, he obviously has a website and loads of courses. Yeah, this one, um, this guy. These are probably your two best bets for for modern development, I think. And you don't have to go like super crazy or super deep. I think just learning the basics is is really helpful, uh, in my opinion. Um, 
Mm, for this, I tend to keep bullet points uh, and then references to stuff. So um, I think because I've been doing it long enough, most of the time I have a good idea of how attack's going to work, um, even if I don't have the details. And then I can dive into some blog post or, or some resource that has more details to remember. But most of the time, I just take bullet point notes is, is, my, um, is the way I do it. All right, one last question. All right, let's go for this one. Um, I'm still new, 17 years old. Where should I start? Um, yeah, so we had this question before. So I think well, I'll, just, I'll just reiterate this one, uh, which is if I go back. Do, 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 do. So either you have you have two choices. One is um, uh, do the ethical hacking in 15 hours. This is a great course to start you off. It's going to give you uh, a, a good skill set and a good methodology to follow for for pen testing. The other one is just come to Try Hack Me. Come and uh, a lot of content on Try Hack Me is free as well, so you can just come to learn on here. And if it loads. So I mean, my internet is uh, is pretty slow, and then you've got this like um, introduction to cybersecurity, pre-security. If you don't have like any IT background or or dev knowledge or anything like this, um, so you can start on one of these two. There's a these are a really great place to start, or if you like uh, listening to Heath, I quite like his um, his like. Uh, I would say like YouTube voice. Um, I find it quite easy to sit and uh, have Heath on and, and, and listen in as well. So those are, I think, are your two really good go-to resources to get started. All right, one, one more question. Uh, thank you very much for doing these videos. You're welcome. Uh, is SOC analyst the first step to break into cybersecurity industry? Uh, it's one of the ways to break in. So, um, I was never a SOC analyst, but I did work on a small security team, and I did have to like do things like review uh, logarithm and, and and stuff like that, and uh, review alerts for the CM. And I learned a lot from doing that. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a good way, and it's definitely more on like the defensive side. So that's you know if you want to be a SOC analyst, instant responder. If you want to go into forensics, malware analysis, then that's like the way to go. Um, but if you want to be like pen testing, red teamer, web app hacking, security engineering, then um, you know maybe go more towards the pen testing path. There are loads of ways in, but the SOC analyst is um, is a good one. And uh, oh, this is a good um, this is a good question. So let's finish on this one. Should I do the Odin project to learn jobs? Yeah, the Odin project is great. Um, I've been through and kind of like skimmed through the contents. Um, it's really, really good. And for those that don't know, let me just bring it up quickly. It always reminds me of playing Valheim, which I lost too many hours of my life playing uh, playing that game. This is a great way. Uh, it has a few different paths, not just JavaScript. Um, so it's got like, yeah, it's got Rails, um, full stack JavaScript, and it's completely free if I recall. So, you know, um, learning HTML, CSS, Node, JS, and things like this. So the Odin project is also great. All right, that's it for today. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Much appreciated. And uh, good to see so many of you in the chat. Um, always appreciate you seeing me. If you, um, if you haven't already, you know, obviously check out the TCM LinkedIn, drop in on the Discord. Feel free to connect with me um, on LinkedIn as well. You can just you can just search my name and and you'll find me. If you um if you have particular topics or things um, uh, that you want me to cover in the live stream, uh, I'm more than happy to to take ideas. Um, if you <laughs> I've just seen, sorry, Joshua, we're just finishing up. Uh, you can check the VOD on uh, on YouTube. It'll be if you go to the Cyber Mentor and click live. Um, but same time every week. Um, so we do two hours on, um, I mean, it's 5 p.m. in the UK. It's like midday, depending on where you are in the US. It's a bit later if you're obviously, you know, if you're in India or, or uh, East Asia, then apologies, the time zone's a bit tricky. But, um, but yeah. Always love hanging out with you all, and uh, I'll see you all next time.